So now we're going to talk about another method of monitoring for mites and I've got an expert with me here to help me with this. This is Melanie Kempers. Uh, she works with the Ontario Beekeepers Association Tech Transfer Program. So she does a lot of this kind of thing and teaches about uh, these methods quite a bit too. Uh, the alcohol wash method is what she's going to demonstrate. I don't do a lot of that with our work. We've already seen our sticky paper method that we use mostly. So Mel's going to take over here and uh, Mel, what do you do and when do you do it and how do you do it? Well, the alcohol wash is a, a great monitoring method. Uh, it works very, very well and unfortunately that's because it kills both the bees and the varroa mites. So the varroa mites are holding on to the adult bees with their little feet. Uh, they can hold on quite tight and so when you want to look for levels of infestation and you're taking a sample of bees to do that, the mites will stay holding on unless you can kill them. And unfortunately, to kill a varroa mite, you're probably also going to kill uh, the bees, uh, which is unfortunate. But we like to assimilate this as to, you know, taking a, a biopsy or a sample of your blood to see if there is some uh, uh, aspects of problems in that. And so we're just taking a very small sample of bees. Uh, it's a very small number in, in terms of population size but we're getting to see what their infestation level is because of that small sample we're taking. We like to do this first thing in the spring once they start really boosting up in their population. When the bees population starts to increase, the varroa mites will also start to increase. So that is a great time to check your levels. You want to start the bees off in the spring with a, a low infestation level of varroa mites, as low as you can get them. And so to start the season off really clean and, and, and strong, you want to make sure you check your levels. And from there, if you can, and if you are willing, we suggest you do this on a monthly basis. So every month from, say, June onwards or May onwards, you're going to be checking your levels for varroa mites. And you'll see that increase happening. That infestation percentage will increase as the population of that hive increases. Uh, another really important time to check your mite levels is in the, the late summer, early fall because the bees are then going to be producing their winter bees. Winter bees have to be very healthy to make it through several months of being in the cold temperatures. They need to survive that entire time, so they need to be born very healthy. So that means your low levels of infestation will allow those bees to be healthy and strong for the winter. So checking your levels, say, in August is very ideal. We want to make sure our levels are low at that time. We want to step in and do something if our levels are high and uh, we want to make sure that those winter bees are very healthy for the winter time. So we're set to go then, right? Uh, thanks a lot for that explanation there. That really helps to know about the timing. Um, which, so to take this sample then, what kind of bees are you looking for? Uh, we're looking for bees from the brood chamber. The varroa mites live within the brood, so that's where they will stay. They t typically hang out on nurse bees and house bees. So we want to make sure we're down in the brood chamber. Right now we don't have honey supers on, so we can go right in and find the brood frames, frames with brood on them. Uh, a, a variety of brood is good. You want some open larva and some capped brood because the mites are attracted to that open area. But the house bees are looking after capped brood as well. So the brood frames are what you want to look for when you're getting a sample of bees. We also say you shake a variety of frames into a tub so that you're not just relying on one frame for that sample. Uh, and what do you do about the queen, Mel, so you don't get the queen in your alcohol wash? Right, good point. So I did mention that this unfortunately does kill some bees. Uh, we don't want to kill the queen. She's very, very important in the, for the success of the hive. We want to make sure she's safe. So it is recommended you go in ahead of time, find your queen and cage her or put her on a frame and take her into another box potentially temporarily so that you're not shaking her into the tub. Okay. We have found our queen today. She's caged in uh, a roller cage uh, and uh, we want to make sure that she's safe for this process so she's going to stay in that cage until we're done. Okay, well let's get some bees in our samples in. So the brood is typically towards the center. So if you want to make sure you've got to some space, take your frames out, give yourself a little bit of room. So we just got a honey frame there, and we'll work over to the middle where the brood will be. We're in the fall of the year, the queens have stopped laying, there's not a lot of brood at this point. Uh, so we'll get those middle frames out, 
Uh, we've already looked, there's some open brood on this frame. Nice shank, Mel. They all went in. How about that? I think you've done this before. I have. Alright, we're going to probably do just a few frames. Make sure we get a variety of bees in the sample. So you're not, not all those bees are going in the sample? No, we're going to take a part of that into our container to see what our, our levels are like. Okay, I can put those frames back in. You want to carry on. Perfect. So I have here a half cup. Um, a half a cup of bees is approximately 300 bees. And so that gives you a good estimate of what's happening inside the hive. Right now, there's probably 30, 40,000 bees in the hive. So 300 is a very small amount. You want a level scoop. Make sure you don't have a heaping or too low. You have your alcohol ready, so we want 70% alcohol, and the bees will go inside. The rest of the bees can go back into the colony, so Paul's going to dump them back in. And for now, we're going to use this handy dandy device called the mite shaker or the bee shaker, and that gives us an idea of how many mites are living within the bees inside this colony. You want to shake it for about a minute or two and that'll give it time to kill the mites uh, as well as the bees and that will separate them. The mites will no longer hold on with their little feet. They won't have the ability to do so. And inside these jars is a screen and that screen is a number eight mesh or an, a hardware cloth with eight squares per inch and so that'll allow mites to go through and, and not the bees. So it's, it's welded together there with two lids with the screen in between the two, right? Correct, yes. It's a plastic weld. It's kind of like two peanut butter jars. You can attempt to make your own if you'd like, but make sure that your weld is going to be alcohol proof. When you use glue, it falls apart. So we've given it some time. When you flip it over, it's best not to just jam the bees down onto the screen. You want to make sure the mites can pass through. So we like to use the tornado movement. <laughs> and make sure that everything passes through. You even want to give it a bit of a shake and make you're, sure the mites are coming through. You're getting as many as possible off the bees then. Correct. You see any there? Oh. Yeah, so sometimes they float. You got to give them a chance to come down. Oh yeah, some on the surface there too. Yeah, so I see one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six mites in approximately about 300 bees. That is about a 2% infestation level. Uh, Mel, how would that compare? Uh, let, we should talk about thresholds a little bit. So uh, we need to compare the sticky paper results with the alcohol wash method and, and talk a bit about what our threshold is here in Ontario. Correct. So uh, our thresholds have been kind of um, brought forth by a collection of researchers and extension workers and people who are working in the industry. We talk about what we see, uh, what levels are damaging, and what our research has shown. So in the spring, we like to you know, go a little bit on the lesser side. We want to make sure our infestation levels are low to begin the season. So for alcohol wash, you want a 1% to 2% infestation at the most. Uh, in the fall, it's about a 2 to 3% infestation. For the sticky paper, we do it more of a 24-hour count. Now, you should leave it in for, say, three days so that you get an average count per day. And you want no more than nine per day in the spring and 12 in the fall. So if those thresholds are exceeded, that prompts mm -hmm. the use of uh, a miticide of some sort. Yes, yeah, so stepping in and, and doing something about those levels is important to keeping that infestation level low. So you can use something like a treatment you can also use management techniques like drone brood removal or brood breaking, uh, things that can help uh, diminish and keep that level steady. You may not lower the level with management techniques, but you will maintain that they don't increase as fast. Right, so for breaking the brood cycle, things like introducing a queen cell versus a mated queen would do that. Or making or a split. Making up a split. So there's a number of cultural controls like that. Correct. Uh, that, that's great. That's uh, a simple method. There are many other methods, but we're trying to keep this as straightforward as possible. Uh, you've done a really great job there. I particularly like that tornado technique. We're going to have to practice on that. 
Thanks very much, Mel. Appreciate your help.